So my apartment's a wreck. Um, this is all my major receipts and billing and tax information for the past two and a half years. Um, and I've been sorting through a bunch of it because I needed paperwork today. Uh, well, turned out I didn't need it, but I was looking for a certain piece of paperwork uh, for the Hello Work office. Um, normally I go to the Foreigner's Hello Work office up in Umeda. Um, but today I was going to the local one because that's where I paid into for my unemployment insurance. Uh, now I'm signed up for, I have a seminar I have to go to tomorrow on how to use the unemployment insurance and things that are expected of me. It's all in Japanese. Um, they were not sure I had to take it because I'm a foreigner, but you know, I speak enough Japanese and I was I, uh, not opposed to it. So it'll be a cultural experience, something interesting to learn about. Um, Interesting to see the people there as well, see what other, how other people are taking a uh, change in the economy here. Um, and then I uh, had another interesting experience this morning. Um, when I was getting on the train to go there, I ran into one of my old co-workers. Uh, he was dressed in cargo pants and a casual jacket, very unusual for a Tuesday morning. And I asked him, uh, uh, what's going on? What are you doing here? He said, oh, didn't you hear? Uh, apparently, yesterday, well, the company kind of went pear-shaped. A um, couple of other very important people were planning on quitting by the end of the month, and they declared bankruptcy yesterday at 10 a.m. So, I just got off a week early <laughs> compared to everyone else. Everyone else is getting the same thing. They're all getting laid off. They all get a month severance. Um, in my case, I was you know, lucky that I already got all this taken care of. Um, me and my coworker then went to the bank after we met, um, and we checked to make sure last month's salary went in, because you know, that'd be important. Um, and in my case, the severance pay has already gotten into my account. Um, and I know for... Uh, well, we had a different distribution center for a while that we... We, our own distribution center splintered off and became an outsourced distribution center, um, and we were paying them. And apparently, we then we let them go in December because they weren't efficient enough. Um, so it turned out to be a way to get rid of some people that were inefficient in the company, um, kind of a sneaky way, and wasn't very nice. It wasn't very well orchestrated, you know, cutting corners on it. Um, didn't work out well. But some of those people haven't gotten all their severance pay yet, even though. That's technically another company, but part of the money has to come from Nico as well, um, or something of that sort. I'm not sure how that works, but apparently some people there may not have gotten paid completely yet. So I don't know how that is. Um, for my other coworkers with their severance pay, you know, a lot of times the banks pay people and then the company pays them back. Um, but if the company has gone bankrupt, the bank may not pay the people. Um, so some of my coworkers. Uh, may have to actually get in contact with lawyers. There's there's a piece of paper on the door at <laughs> at both offices. Uh, it says this company has been closed due to bankruptcy. If you need to talk to anyone, contact these lawyers. And there's a list of four guys um, you know, and all their personal seals on there and contact information and um, copies of their information are on the door so you don't have to copy it down. You just take a photocopy. Um, so some of my coworkers may have to go through them if the banks are not or if there's enough money, but I don't know. That's uh, I, you know, in some ways, it's it's a relief that I got out early. I feel kind of weird about it, you know. Um, yeah, I don't necessarily feel bad for the company president. I mean, he ran the company the way he wanted to. This is the result. And it was a very top-heavy company. All the power, all the decisions went through him. Um, but I feel sorry for a couple of my coworkers, you know, the ones who've been working there, you know, five, seven years. You know, and some of them have kids, and you know, some of these guys have worked really hard for this company, and they're getting no reward. You know, there were no bonuses in the last year, um, so they may not have as much saved up as they would have expected, and the company is just gone. No real warning to anyone. Um, I think uh, they probably, you know, rumors that the company just president decided last week, but you know, announced it this week, Monday morning at the uh, morning meeting, and said, you know, I have something to tell everyone, make sure everyone's in here, and just let the phones ring. 
Um, and then they spent the afternoon contacting clients. And, and uh, so everyone knew, and I didn't get contacted with that, but my old supervisor did contact me for a uh, kind of going away party. And I thought, oh, that's nice of them. They're inviting me to a going away party. Well, I guess they will kind of miss me. He didn't tell me that everyone's going away. So it would have been a bit, a bit funnier, a bit more of a funny joke if I had showed up and not known. But um, you know, it's not really that funny that the company just isn't there anymore. I don't know. Um, so they'll be, you know, and people were still there today. Uh, some of the administrative staff and some people were there in casual co clothes because they need to, you know, close things up. But a lot of the major sales staff and a lot of the factory staff just gone. Uh, doors are closed. Don't come back tomorrow. I, <laughs> I know, really rough. Um, I mean, administrative staff, they just, they need people to, to do the paperwork so that people get, you know, paid and so things get to the right people, but that's it. Um, kind of rough for a lot of those guys. Um, and then the other part of my day, I went and got health insurance, which was, um, which almost gave me a heart attack at one point. I said, your health insurance is $300 a month, and you need to pay $300 a month. And I said, that's not possible. Um, that's a huge portion of the salary that I'm no longer getting. <laughs> they, you know, they told me this several times. This is what your allotted payment is if you join the national health insurance. Um, and before, I was on company health insurance, which was cheaper than that. And I... Uh, then they say, but you can apply to have it cheaper. And that's the catch. And so you have to go in and apply to have it cheaper. And then they tell you again that it is $300 a month. Or because you get a couple months free because you've lost your job, it's actually $180 a month. Yeah. They do some funny math on it. But then because you've applied for it to be cheaper, because you don't have a job anymore, they say, we understand, and they drop it down to $30 a month which is reasonable. But they won't do that at the beginning and they won't do it automatically. You have to come in, you have to do the paperwork, and you have to sit through all that or else they charge you $300 a month. It's just like a big power trip. It's obnoxious. And they try, you know, and they act like they're being really nice about it. And then they tell, and told me, well, because of the way the tax year goes, your health insurance will be recalculated automatically in June, so you have to come in and apply and do this again. Now that I know what it is, it won't be as obnoxious, but when they first tell me, yeah, it's $300 a month to insure you for public health insurance, and that's the only one you're going to get. That just wasn't going to work. <laughs> but anyways, um, so seminar tomorrow, and then going to see the news station. Um, should be exciting. Uh, I'll tell you about that after it happens. All right, have a good night.